Hello everyone, it's Carrie. I hope you're having a wonderful holiday season. In today's video, I'm working on a commission for one of my super special customers. He has commissioned this to go with a Grand Admiral Thrawn he previously purchased. He and, he and his girlfriend had cosplayed as these characters. Uh, what I'll be doing is the Governor Price, Governor Aaron uh, Arinda Price. And they cosplayed as these characters, and so he's getting this one for his girlfriend for Christmas to go with his Thrawn, and I just think that's so awesome, and ex I'm excited to see what she thinks. So in this video, I'll be showing you the costume construction, uh, just the basic pieces, and then the face-up, as well as the final photos at the end. So getting started on the pants, I like to do my, instead of stitching the hems, because I feel like when I hand stitch, they're a little off scale uh, to the doll. So I like to use this um, hem tape and uh, fabric fusion to do my hems so you don't see those stitches. And then I stitch up the sides. I've been asked a couple times about the pinking shears. If you can see, it's kind of the, the cut of this. If you're a seamstress, you already are well aware of why I did this, but uh, sometimes I'll cut fabric using pinking shears, which gives it that zigzag cut, and that just prevents a lot of fraying. So when I don't do that, I, I, there's a lot of fraying with fabric, especially when you're working with it at this small of a, a scale. So if I remember to pull out my pinking shears, I like to use those. It just prevents fraying, at least to a certain extent. So I was really happy with these pants. If you're a supporter over on Patreon, this is, I used the pant, uh, in the check the library of rewards and the patterns are in there. And the, this particular pattern is just the regular female pant pattern, but I just kind of looped it out a little bit to give her the this uh, volume on the sides. And then here I'm just using the, I ended up just using the jacket back pattern and I'm just cutting it down it's sort of as a base and then kind of draw around them and then cut. So I used the same thing for the back and then just you just made it a little bit longer so I could um, snap it in the back. So you see those two pieces, I ended up just kind of folding them over and hemming them and then um, adding a snap. And I like to do to make all of my clothes removable since I do sell alls. So I'm just showing the thick pieces that I made on this doll and then I added some embellishments like a front panel and then a... Uh, rank. I, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's the bar that shows their rank and then some uh, other little detail pieces in the front. And I can see how it snaps. And then using that same pattern, just kind of shrinking it down, I added a panel to the front. Then I use these embellishments to do the the ripple, and this matches the one that I did for Thrawn. And I'm using my new Arteza Outdoor Acrylics. These are really good for uh, because they seal, they're self-sealing, and I'm, I'll be doing a review video of those coming soon. So onto the face-up, I'm using a Charisse hood for this character from Ever After High, and I rooted her with some soft alpaca yarn and then just texturized it or just uh, thinned it and brushed it out. I'm using Derwent watercolor in white. And I always start with a base of, I've mentioned this in several of my videos, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I repeat some sometimes, but um, if you're new to my channel, I like to make sure that everybody is aware of some of the things that I tend to do. But what I like to do is do a base of white, build that up, and then then I'll go in with the iris and the eye color and that way it helps me keep a nice um, 
it gives me like a nice canvas to work on for that color so it doesn't look muddy. I used to just uh, use the white around, like paint the, the shape of the eye first and then add the white around it. And then the color looked kind of muddy. So, um, and I've changed a few of my techniques over the years to build up that, to make that color show a little bit nicer. But one of my things that I feel like really worked a, a lot better was getting a, a nice white canvas and then going on top of that with the eye color. So I'm using a custom mix of some of this, I think it's burnt sienna with some peach and uh, like a pale, pale pink. And did a little mix to uh, do some shading on dolls where it's not so dark. I think since I've started using pan pastels, which was a few years ago, They've come out with some more colors, but at the time I purchased my large set, they only, they didn't have a wide variety of earth tones, so I think that they've added to those. So I need to get some, but the custom mixes have been working pretty well. So I'm going in with some white to do some highlighting on the forehead and nose and under eye. So when I do the lips, I use the pan pastel for the base and just kind of to get the shape. And then I'll refine it with the watercolor pencil. The paintbrush that I'm using is actually just a very tiny round brush that I've cut down. And now I'm using a Derwent Terracotta color pencil to shape that up. She has more of a natural lip, so I'm using, I like to use the terracotta in most cases when it's a natural lip. And I'm darkening up the corners of the mouth and carrying that slightly towards the center of the lip. So I have some great news. I'm going to be teaching a class. It's a, a quite a lot of the ones that I did at Michael's. This is a six hour class at uh, Gallery 27 in Lincolnton, North Carolina, and that's on February 1st. So I'll leave the link to that in the description box below. If you're in the area or wanting to come to the area to join the class, we'd love to have you. We had an awesome time with my previous classes and the only thing that, well, the, basically the only thing that we wanted was um, for further classes was uh, more time and um, larger spaces because the Michaels class didn't have a new space which is a really nice gallery in Lincolnton like I said gallery 27 super nice people there and uh, more time so and it's a uh, we're gonna dive more into some advanced techniques so we can everybody can leave with a full face up and feel happy with it so like I said, check that out in the description box below. If you're interested in maybe a last minute Christmas gift or request yourself, I'd love to have you. So here I'm just wanting to uh, I can make sure that they're as close to the shape and length and um, size as uh, each other. So I did some dotting uh, as a guide before I started in with the pastel. You can always erase, but I just do a whole lot of erasing because then I have to do a whole lot of resealing if you erase too much. So adding those dot guide as guides really help. Especially eyebrow. <laughs> oh, and another thing, if you're um, not able to make my, uh, 
in-person classes. I have in my Patreon a, it's limited time only, it's only for the rest of this year, so just a couple more weeks uh, for all the all patrons, $5 and up, um, and you can cancel any time, is my PowerPoint presentation on uh, beginner uh, face-up. So it's like a step-by-step face-up process with the supplies that you need and what you should do step by step. It's a good tool for beginners or even somebody who's a little bit more intermediate just to, um, you, it has some extra tips. And uh, after the end of the year, it's no longer available for uh, anybody who isn't able to take my in-person classes, but it is available on Patreon now. So if you're interested in that, uh, join, uh, check out the link below to join my Patreon, um, subscribe, cancel any time. And also to those who are already patrons, just a heads up on that. If you want to go ahead and save that to your computer or whatever, um, so you'll have it after it's gone. So now with that nice layer of white, you can see how adding the blue, it's nice and blue, and I don't have to build up those, that blue color too much on its own. It has that nice um, canvas to, that makes it pop, makes the color pop right away. So right, it's that first layer showing up really nice and blue because of that. So I worked, I like to work, um, both eyes at the same time going back and forth and that helps me keep them the same size the best I can and the, and the same shape and just trying to keep everything symmetrical if I work at one work with at both eyes at the same time just going back and forth that really helps So here I'm just adding a little bit more white under the eyes for a highlight. And again, I'm using pan pastels. So I'm trying to keep the pupil of the eye not so incredibly large. I want them kind of um, a little bit smaller than I do normally. I like to usually like to do a nice big pupil, but um, when when you make them different sizes, it helps with their expression. So this one is more serious and not as sweet and innocent. Uh, so I I did a smaller pupil. If if you do a larger pupil, that tends to make it look a little bit more sweet and innocent. So I kept it a little bit smaller than I normally do because I wanted her to still look cute, but a little bit more sinister. <laughs> so here she is. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up. I hope you continue to have a wonderful month and the end of the year soon, so have a happy, happy new year if I don't talk to you before then. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.